Hello farmers and welcome to the Kenyan farmer. Every time you talk about food security in Kenya, there is one crop that takes all the credit. In fact, right from early school days, the main meal was githeri or ugali and sometimes porridge for nursery kids. Maize or corn has many uses in our society. It is a major constituent used for commercial livestock feeds. It's also farmers' favorite crop grown for silage. Maize is so important that even Kenyan politicians manipulate people's opinion by just talking about it. At times, I think to myself, could this overdependence on one crop be the source of our food insecurity? Today, I want to show you how my grandparents used to select the seed for planting. I know I am living in the age of big terms like certified seeds, patents and GMOs. But do you know that crop improvement and seed selection is an old survival skill? There is nothing new under the sun. Let me start by giving a brief definition of the terms. The main parts of a maize plant are the tassel, which is basically the male flower, the ear or the fruit, which is the female part of the flower. The fruit has hairs commonly called silk. There are other parts like the stalk and the leaves, commonly used for livestock feed as stova. The fruit has many rows of kernel or the seed, and it is this seed which is my major attention today. So, how was selection done? Desirable qualities were noted starting from the field. Very short or stunted plants and the very tall ones could not be selected. Later in school, I realized stunting could be a sign of stress or disease. Very tall plants could easily fall due to strong winds and rains. And when green maize fall to the ground, it is food to many animals, even some unlikely suspects. Back then, the main disease was the fungal maize smut. I've not seen it so rampant nowadays. The disease was so bad that you could not feed even the livestock with these plants. I guess nowadays we have new problems like the maize lethal necrosis disease and even stem borers. Rotting at the tips or ear rods on the plants was also a no-no. Generally, all diseased plants were not considered for seed. After harvesting the selected plants, further selection of the fruits was done. Have you ever realized that from the same farm you can harvest different sizes of the fruits? Now, the biggest ones were the winners. The best fruits had straight lines that were completely filled, like no gaps. They had to be filled up to the top. The fruits that had big seeds and made the sweetest food were also given a priority. Now, after the best fruits were selected, they had still to be processed in a way to get the best seeds. Let me see if I can demonstrate to you how this was done. The first thing I break the top part of the fruit. This part will not be necessary. I also break the bottom part of the fruit. This will also not be necessary. I don't need to worry about poorly pollinated seeds. We need the seeds with the highest germination percentage. Then I start threshing the kernels manually from the cob by hand. I mean you can beat the rest of the harvest in sacks with sticks to thresh the seeds, but not these ones. These are special seeds. You do realize that beating the dry fruits in sacks can damage the seeds. Did I say that sweetness also matters? The sweeter, the best. Speaking of sweet maize, I remember the sweetest maize was the yellow ones. I think it was introduced by the ministry as relief food, or maybe I'm wrong. This maize cob can be processed further to make livestock feed. Nothing goes to waste. 
after dressing, what you are left with is the real deal. This is what was used as planting material. I am left with clean, uniform planting material. Do you see what I meant by this being a survival skill? Well, these are not certified seeds. They have their drawbacks, but they worked at the time. By the way, do you know that it's illegal to distribute such seeds as certified seeds in Kenya? So, why am I showing you this old obi? Well, I think it can qualify as a history lesson. Today, science is perfecting these skills. And we have even big companies that even legally own varieties. I hope this video gave you a rough idea of how traditional seed selection worked. Thank you for watching. Like, share and subscribe. And if you like to support my work, check on the link on the description of this video. See you in the next video and God bless you.